My name is Mary Boone. I was the State Librarian of North Carolina from November of 2005 through December of 2011, so that was a six-year period. And during that time, I worked closely with NC Live. One of the first things that I got involved in when I was State Librarian was the hiring of the first Executive Director of NC Live, Tim Rogers. And we did interviews during the uh, fall and winter of 2006 and um, hired Tim, who came on board in April of 2007. And that was a real transition for NC Live because it went from being an all-volunteer organization to being one that had professional leadership, if you know what I mean. There was someone who was working full-time as the director of the program. And that enabled NC Live to grow and expand in ways that really would not have been possible if um, it were done by volunteer librarians who already had full-time jobs. So we saw a real evolution of NC Live begin at that time in several different ways. One was that um, there was changeover in staff. There were new types of staff added to the uh, staff of NC Live, kinds of people we hadn't had before. There were um, major expansions in the type of resources that NC Live included. One of them that I'd like to particularly highlight because we in the State Library were instrumental in this program and that was the addition of PBS videos. The Public Broadcasting Service licensed um, access to quite a large number of their videos to, uh, let's see what it is, over 250 really high quality educational and cultural and historic programs that were now available to all of our North Carolina library users through NC Live. That was the first. We were the first state to do that. It greatly expanded the types of resources that were available and it was such a good program that it actually won a national award. The American Library Association presented the 2008 Rethinking Resource Sharing Innovation Award to NC Live that year at the National Conference. That was very exciting. Very seldom does one see the, have the opportunity to see the kind of cooperation, especially between public and academic libraries, and the academic libraries themselves, which includes our public university, the UNC system, all of our private universities in the state, and our community college libraries. All four of these library communities worked really hand in hand and as equal partners in NC Live, and continue to this day. But I think it started out really well because NC Live was a volunteer organization that pulled from all these four library communities to bring people actively into participation in NC Live, either through the Librarians Council or in the various committees, because all of these communities are represented in all of the committees across the board in NC Live. As state librarian, I've had the chance to see the way things like this work in other states, and very seldom in my career have I seen the level of cooperation and coordination that we see among libraries through NC Live. It's really truly unique and very special, I think. Now I like to say that because of NC Live, the people in Hamlet, North Carolina, have all of the same resources available to them that the people in Charlotte have, our largest city. So that it's very exciting to see that this happens in a, in a milieu of cooperation among libraries to see that there are literally thousands if not hundreds of thousands of information resources available and those have expanded greatly. It's not just the traditional databases that provide newspaper and magazine articles but it's the videos, it's electronic books, it's all kinds, it's um, audio books, all kinds of resources that are possible to acquire electronically are available on NC Live and they're available to everyone. That's what makes NC Live so special to me. I think the thing that to me was my most memorable experience working was in NC Live was working with the NC Live Executive Board to hire the first executive director. We really bonded during that time period. We came together as a group and looked at various applicants from all over the country. I mean, there was a lot of interest in this position. It was very exciting for us to see that and to see the caliber of people who were interested in working with NC Live and making it their career. 
in North Carolina, we have such a fabulous group of librarians who are so willing to work together as a, as a cooperation and really enjoy each other and really get to know each other. There's so many places in the United States and in the world where libraries are, live in little boxes. You know, and the public librarians never talk to the academic librarians and never talk to the school librarians, and we're all separated. But to have that experience where we would truly work together, because I wasn't involved in the early days of NC Live, I had a taste of what it was like for those librarians who had worked in the early days to bring this program uh, together and really make it possible for North Carolina. If there were one thing I would like the people of North Carolina to know about NC Live, it would be that it's there and it's there for all of them. Sometimes I worry that not enough people know about it, that we, as much as we try to get the word out and as ubiquitous as it is in libraries across the state, not always, people don't always know enough to know, people don't always know about it. So I would say that every time I bring this up, I did a, a talk to a, a group um, in the Daughters of the American Revolution recently, and I was telling them about it because they're all about genealogy, and there's a lot of genealogy, there's a lot of history, there's a lot of newspaper and magazine articles that were very, very interesting. I mean, any group that you go to, any group that you talk to will find something that's important and relevant to them in NC Live, whether they're business people, whether they're academic and school-related people, whether they're just a, a community organization like the DAR. There are people out there who can benefit from NC Live, and I hope that we can continue to get the word out so more and more and more people will know about NC Live and take Take advantage of its resources. Because of the enormous downturn in the community, a lot of libraries in our state, and in particular our public libraries, took huge cuts in their budgets, and in particular their book budgets. One of the things that made it that NC Live contributed at that time was that even though local resources had to be diminished, the fact that NC Live was there as the backbone of North Carolina resources, then everybody still had access to thousands and thousands of resources that simply would not have been available to people in local communities otherwise, to students in universities and community colleges and to people in towns all around North Carolina. The fact of NC Live made it possible for people to still carry on good work in our libraries because those resources are there on this comparatively economic platform, if you will. You know, it's because we pay for something and everybody has access to it. So we get enormous value out of NC Live in that way.